promise you my horse? Sure. <laughs> well, who's winning? Well, after 24 consecutive games of horseshoes, I'm not even sure. I'm telling you, Johnny, I welcome a jailbreak, a flash flood, anything that needs dealing with. <laughs> I didn't know you knew anybody down in a place called Gas Hill in Yuba County. I don't. I let it for you. This was from an old friend named Godfrey Evans. I haven't seen him and his little girl in about five years. Bad news? Yeah, he's dying. S says he wants to see me while there's still time. Anything you want Scott and I to do? Yeah, saddle my horse. Hey, wait a minute. What's written on the back? Darling of the Sierras. Penny Rose, song and recitations. 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 Jack from her triumphal engagement on the Comstock. Oh, them golden slippers. Oh, them golden slippers. Golden slippers I'm gonna wear to walk on the golden street. All my golden slippers are laid away. Ain't gonna wear them till my wedding day. Fancy coat that I love so well. Wear so early in the morn. Have your golden slippers so nice and clean. And your age must be just sweet 16. White kid gloves you have to wear when you dress up so early in the morn. Oh, them golden slippers. Oh, them golden slippers. Golden slippers I'm gonna wear. Cause they look so neat. Oh, them golden slippers. Oh, them golden slippers. Golden slippers I'm gonna wear to walk on the golden street. Oh, them golden slippers. Oh, them golden slippers. Golden slippers I'm gonna wear cause they look so neat. Oh, them golden slippers. Oh, them golden slippers. Golden slippers I'm gonna wear to walk on the golden street. So it's goodbye, children, I will have to go Where the rain don't fall or the wind don't blow And your fancy coats, why you will not need When you dress up early in the morn And my long white robe that I bought last June I'm gonna get it changed cause it fits too soon What a great camp meeting there'll be that day When we dress up so early in the morn Oh, them golden slippers Oh, them golden slippers Golden slippers I'm gonna wear to walk Just one more song for all the boys. Pretty please? Well, hello. Who are you? You don't remember me. You were a little girl and you were playing with a great big spotted dog named Belle. Oh, uh, look, mister, you're uh, buttoning into our little show. Why don't you just set a spell and... Uncle Murdoch, it's you! <laughs> How's your daddy? He's kind of sick. Yes, I know he is. Maybe your friends will let you go away with me so you can show me where you live. Ah, uh, uh-uh. Not until you tell us all who you are. My name is Lancer. It's all right, Fletch. Uncle Murdoch's about the best friend my father's got. Oh, oh, well, it's all right then. Long as you promise you'll come back and sing us all a song tomorrow. Oh, I promise. Goodbye. Bye. Bye now. My little darling. Bye-bye, little darling. Ah, ah. My little darling. <laughs> hey, what you do that for? I didn't do nothing. But the way you've been sashaying around that kid... Maybe I got me a reason. Yeah, Fletch? What? Money. <laughs> that little girl's been paid more gold in the past five years than we could make for the rest of our lives digging. I hear that her old daddy doesn't trust banks. Now, I figure that he's going to tell somebody where it is before he kicks off. Now, maybe it'll be the kid, huh? 
And when that happens, why, the three of us will just move right on in. to your Auntie Hester. Give her a kiss. My, you're, you're dirty. Doesn't that father of yours ever see to it that you take a bath? I suppose you haven't heard, but Godfrey is in poor health. I'm Murdoch Lancer. He's father's friend, and he's come to see father before he dies. I would... What a thing for a little girl to say. Nobody's going to pass on, Penny Rose. But father is. He told me himself. Fiddlesticks. Godfrey's been sick often enough before, and he always gets well, doesn't he? You go scrub your hands and face. Later, we'll see about a nice hot bath. But I was taking... Penny Rose, do as I say. But... This I... minute. You will forgive her bad manners, Mr. Lancer. The life that poor child's been forced to lead. You're Miss McLaughlin. Well, it was nice that you were able to get time off to see Godfrey through to, well, whatever lies ahead. I'm here for one thing only, Mr. Lancer. To get Penny Rose away from that man while there's still time to save her. From what? Isn't it obvious? Oh, there you are. Did you hear me ringing? something important to talk about. Just as soon as you're up to it. Now, Penny Rose. Now, don't you worry about her, Trooper. I'll see she's taken care of. I've seen to that. I saved all the money she's earned. She's rich. As rich as a Princess. What then? A place to live? She needs a woman's care. Her. Her Aunt Hester. But. A fortune needs looking after, too. I. I. Made out my will. Naming you for that job. There ain't a man in God's earth I'd I, I, I'd, I'd trust uh, with that. Oh, uh, don't worry, Troop. Oh, you can count on me. Oh, oh. medicine. Yeah. You 
don't know. I... I haven't told you where the... As we gather together in this solemn hour, we, the grieving friends of the departed, Godfrey Evans, let us bow our heads in a moment of silent prayer. It was the schooner Hesperus that sailed the wintry sea, and the captain has taken his little daughter to bear him company. Down came a storm and smote amain the vessel in its strength. She shuddered and paused like a frightened steed, then leaped her cable's length. Come hither, come hither, my little daughter, and do not tremble so, for I can weather the roughest gale that ever wind. This is a funeral. How could you, how could you show such disrespect for your who departed father? I hate you! Penny Rose! Penny Rose, you come back here! Say. Well, she hates me. No. You can't blame your aunt too much. I don't think she understands children too well. But I'm not a child. I'm a special person. I have a gift. I make people happy when I sing and do recitations for them, even sad poems. Did you know people feel better after they went? Everybody was sad that fathers did, and I thought that maybe if I helped them cry their tears out... What about yours? You don't want to hold yours back, do you? Troopers don't cry real tears. We only pretend. Oh. I can make a crowd cry for real when I'm only pretending. Especially when I do the wreck of the Hesperus and come to the part that goes. Oh, Father, I see a gleaming light. Oh, say, what may it be? But the Father answered never a word. A frozen corpse was he. She feels about it. 
What? You're her only relative, her sister's little girl, Penny. She wants to make a home for you. No, she doesn't. She wants to turn me into an old prune just like she is. Well, I'm not going to let her. I'm Penny Rose, and I'm going to keep on singing forever. Well, you know, everything changes. Even the little darling of the Sierras will grow up one of these days. But for now, why can't I go on another tour of the mining camps? Because your Aunt Hester doesn't approve. And since she's your legal guardian, you have to respect her wishes. Do you like me? I wish you were mine. Then why can't I be? You are my father's friend, and it would make him happy if you took his place. Uh, honey, it just isn't possible. But I have a fortune. Didn't my father tell you? There is no fortune. Mr. Lancer, you have a caller in the lobby, a lawyer who wrote Godfrey's will. Oh. Right. Penny Rose, there simply is no fortune. Now, the sooner you stop dreaming about it, the better. But there is. My father promised. Seems hard to believe. Talk to the lawyer. Well, we'll talk about this more tomorrow. Mr. Lancer hired a wagon for us so we could take everything with us. Isn't that nice? Even the player piano? Even the player piano. What are you doing? I'm uh, helping you pack. Mercy, what a rat's nest. Now it's true, Mr. Evans left nothing but unpaid bills. I understand it. I kept talking about a fortune that he'd saved a penny's earnings. Well, his creditors would be relieved. Where did he keep it? He died before he could tell me. Oh, I see. Well, I suppose if such a fortune does exist, it'll turn out. I find it hard to believe that you could draw up a man's will and not look into his financial affairs. I did ask him about it. He said he lost the child's money through bad investments and bad bets at the poker table. Yeah, he used to gamble a lot. Of course, that was... Ten years ago. No. I would have sensed it if he was lying. Miss <sighs> McLaughlin. Isn't that Penny's costume suitcase? It's a great deal more than that, Mr. Lancer. It's a tawdry part of Penny Rose's life that we're going to put safely behind her. I'm going to burn them, Mr. Lancer. Destroy them utterly. Does that shock you? Yes. I guess it does a little. It seems to me she's lost so much already. The child needs to learn values. It's as simple as that. She can't stay a nine-year-old curly-haired canary bird all her life. The sooner we remove these symbols, the better. Don't you think your timing is a little bit off? What matters most right now is that Penny Rose is a nine-year-old girl who desperately needs to cling to anything she can. Saved himself a rib. Yeah. Won't wash, Mr. Picking. Why would Godfrey appoint me executor if he was penniless? Mr. Lancer, you're a rich man. You're rich enough to pay up all his debts, keep a swarm of creditors away from his daughter. Mr. Lancer? Mr. Lancer? Mr. Lancer? It's Penny Rose. Her window's open. I think she's run away. <laughs> from here and let me live with you and your little girl? We'd love to have you, but well, you'd be another mouth to feed, and unless you could get some money to help out. I could sing for people, and they'd give me lots of money. But what about all that money your daddy hid? 
Now, if, if you could tell me where it is, I'd fetch it, and we'd be off to Missouri in the morning. I don't know where he put it. Come on, think. You must know where it is. If I did, would you take me with you? Hey boy, if you could get that money right now, Penny Rose, we could get the wheels rolling. But I can't. Not right now, but I will. I promise. Yeah, well, when you do, you make sure that you tell us about it, won't you? You know what I'm going to do right now? I'm going to take you back and to your hotel so the bad boogeyman won't get you. No, no, I can't go. I don't want to go live with that old Annie Hester. She's mean and she's cruel and she's going to burn up all the pretty things and make me sleep in the corner and clean the fireplace. And if I try to sing when I work, she'll beat me with a switch. I never did you hear that. Penny Rose, have a shame on you, you, you naughty, naughty girl. Running away and, and, and telling lies. I won't live with her. I'll run away more times than anybody can catch me. you think. Charlie's such an imagination. You're in no danger here, ma'am. We ain't got no appetite for no uh, green persimmon. <laughs> <laughs> Penny Rosa, go behind some rocks and we'll pick some flowers. What are you doing? What are you... I'll have you out of this in a jiffy. What are you doing? What, what are you doing? I'm getting you out of this corset so you can get some air in your lungs. This, this is highly improper or not. Your face was turning the same color as your stockings. No! Oh! Oh! Ah! Oh! Oh! 
Miss McLaughlin, some of your ideas about being proper would be comical if they weren't tragic. Judge! <gasps> Maybe pathetic is the word. I think about the Chinese binding their daughters' feet to keep them small and dooming those poor little girls to adult lives as cripples. Well, same thing can happen from wearing a corset too tight. Life has rules. Only ten. The rest are just manners and conventions. Keep that. Just let it out a couple of notches. It's the only way you'll ever be happy with a girl like Penny Rose. No, it would be wrong for me to relax my standards. Penny Rose must learn to conform to the ways of society. Then I pity you both. Sometimes my father would help ladies off with their courses. It meant he liked them. Do you like her, Uncle Murdoch? Why don't you sing something? It would be nice if you did like her. Then Annie Hester could come live with you and do the things that make men happy. Annie Rose. I think it would be nice if you did like her. It would be nice for everybody, because then you'd kind of be my daddy, and everybody could do the things that make them happy. Isn't that right? Mr. Lancer will know what to do. So much weight. I'm gonna have to lighten the load if that team is ever gonna get this wagon out of here. I'll help you. Penny Rose. Penny Rose. Penny Rose. Thank you. 
Stand still while your slave dries you. Annie Hester? Yes, dear. You've forgiven me for being so mean, haven't you? Oh, yes. Wasn't very nice. But I'd forgotten about it after poor Mr. Lancer's misfortune. <laughs> We, we mustn't even smile. <laughs> oh, 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 shame on us. Oh, my. Oh, oh mercy. Annie Hester? Yes, dear. You didn't like my mother, did you? What a thing to say. Of course I liked her. All sisters like it. Love each other. I've even forgiven her for... Never mind. I wish I didn't look like her. Then maybe you'd love me. But I do. I, I do. I think I'll be a fairy princess. Really, Penny Rose, that's not a bit sensible for traveling. But Uncle Murdoch says we'll be going through a town before we get to his ranch tonight, and I want to look pretty for people. There's more to life than just being pretty. What's the matter? All you want is make-believe. And I'm sorry, but I won't permit it. Well, I'm the little darling of the Sierras, and I'm putting on my prettiest clothes, and you can't stop me. We'll see about that. Now, you stay right there. And don't you dare move until I fetch something proper. <laughs> wrong. It's my fault. I don't know what's the matter with me. Penny's a dear child, really, but whenever I'm around her, I, I just can't help being hateful. If only she didn't remind me of my... Sister? I knew Annabelle, too. Don't forget that. Penny has that same sparkle. Somehow the ability to make people feel happy. Annabelle has no right to be happy. Running off with that actor. Leaving me to face the scandal. Even so. I would have forgiven her, but... She didn't show the slightest sign of remorse. It was an awful long time ago. And if wrong was done, Penny shouldn't be held responsible. I don't know. I... Everything's such a confusion. Again, the little darling of the Sears. 
Ain't we gonna get you some of them fancy dresses and you'll look so pretty and beautiful and, and glittering forever? It's all make-believe. And nobody's glittering and beautiful forever. <clears throat> yeah. Well, darling, you're not gonna... You're not gonna let that old persimmon dry you up like she is, are you? Hmm? Yeah, well, you just let us take care of everything. <laughs> What came over me? I never cry. Where's Penny? Oh my. She's waiting over by the stream. We quarreled about her wearing this. I see. Her. What's wrong? Nothing really. I was just thinking about Godfrey and his fortune. Made by Greenspan and Sons. Well, they're the finest jewelers in San Francisco. Do you, th you think this is real? It's possible. And it would be like Godfrey. Put all of his money into something that could be carried around easily without attracting attention. Like part of a child's costume. If, if it's true, I've done a terrible injustice to Godfrey. Misjudging him. position to dicker. Did you see he's right? I'll take it up to no, them. No, don't take that up. But it's Wait, do that. There's life. nothing to keep them from killing all of us. I know it's Penny's <laughs> life and yours. Now... with the money, or else. No deal. We'll make our trade out of... We both come out in the open, we'll make the trade then. Oh, no, nothing to it. Lancer, you first, or else. It's no ordinary child you've got up there. She's loved by all the miners in these mountains. You can just imagine what they do to anybody who would harm her. You're bluffing, Lancer. Sorry, Fletch. I want that money as much as you do. But I ain't putting myself in line to be hunted down and hung for it. Uh, me neither. All right. We're coming down the count of three. Why are you doing this? You've got a little girl just like me. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, that's why, darling. I'm going to get her all the pretty things your money can buy. Oh, I'm sorry. One! Two, three! Keep going.
What kind of fool are you trying to make me out to be, Lancer? That's glass. That's just for a kid's pretending. Penny, honey, where did your father buy this? A place in San Francisco. And what do they sell at this place in San Francisco? Crowns like that, but mostly rings and bracelets and diamond necklaces. That don't mean nothing. This will. Paste diamonds don't cut glass. Take this up to Mix. He knows all about this. Hold it. Drop it. Just stay right there. We had a deal. Come on, darling. You two get in the front of the wagon. Money doesn't really mean that much. But it does. It means my father didn't forget. It means he loved me. Whatever it meant, we don't need it anymore. helps you to forget some of today's unpleasantness. Oh, of course. But? Now I must face tomorrow. Is that so ominous? Ah, oh, it terrifies me. Going back to my tidy little house, my tidy little world, turning back into an old maid again. That doesn't have to be. What do you mean? Penny Rose will be going with you. She's going to turn your world upside down. And if you're smart... I'll, uh, let my corset out a notch? At least. <laughs> Murdoch. Will you kiss me? because it was my father's very special favorite. Well, it's one of my favorites, too. We're all ready to start. Why don't you not wait for me? 
for Johnny. He's getting the sheriff so we can explain what happened to those miners. Oh, I'll put on a second show. Everybody sit down. Scott, you're cute. Ladies and gentlemen, the little darling of the Sierras, Penny Rose. Stocks and bonds. There's more, look. A hundred shares of Corey Lentz Industries, Penny Rose Evans. Corey Lentz Industries, Penny Rose Evans. Another hundred shares. Breckenridge Utilities Corporation, 100 shares, Penny Rose! Ross Kelton Manufacturing Company, 100 shares, Penny Rose Evans. Breckenridge Utilities Company, Penny Rose Evans, 100 shares. Ross Kelton Manufacturing Company, Penny Rose Evans. I knew he didn't oh, forget Penny. I knew it. Oh, isn't this <laughs> wonderful? Oh, I should have believed you all this time. Oh, Penny Rose. We could go to Vienna? Yes, we could, and you could study music. And you could meet handsome young princes. <laughs> and you'd be happy and love me like a mommy, not just because you had to. Penny Rose. Penny Rose. Well, a fairy tale ending for a fairy tale princess, complete with fortune. Yeah, except I have a feeling that they discovered something much more valuable. 